Understanding Intermediate Accounting, Part 21, Effective Interest Rate Method. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And a related topic can be found on our videos for Intermediate Accounting 3 through 6. I like to think of uh, effective interest rate as a way of explaining what I call total return on bonds. If you buy a corporate bond and you're an investor, one thing you want to know is how much do I earn on my investment? And there's two parts to that answer. The first is you're going to earn interest income semi-annually, usually twice a year in a corporate bond. And then it may be the case that you paid either more or less than par, more or less than par, which is $1,000 for most bonds. If you paid less than par at redemption, you're going to get $1,000 back. You have to account for a gain. If you pay more than par or $1,000, you're only getting $1,000 back at maturity because you paid a premium. So you may, you'll have a gain if you pay a discount pay less, you'll have a loss if you pay more by paying a premium. So the effective interest rate that we'll see in Excel in a minute is a more precise way to measure the total return on a bond. And so what I want to do is I want to flip over to the spreadsheet and the first one we're going to explain is the effective interest rate assuming that a bond is bought at a discount. And we talk about uh, an amortization schedule, and more precisely, you may see the term accretion when it comes to a discount bond. Again, the purpose here is this is a more precise way to measure your total return on a bond than just straight line amortization, which is taking the premium or the discount and recognizing it evenly over each year. So by, by definition, if you buy at a discount, the amount that you pay is less than par. And in my example here, we buy $500,000 worth of bonds at 377107 At maturity, we're going to get back 500000 at the end of 10 years. So we talk about a new term called carrying value. And this carrying value is going to be the net value that's on the balance sheet. And we'll explain that more in a minute. So we talk about a bond being purchased to yield 10%. The actual bond pays an interest rate of 6%. So on $1,000, it pays $6 a year. When we say purchase to yield, what we mean is, is that we are going to pay a discount so that the value of the discount plus the flow of interest payments gives us a total return or what's called a yield to maturity of 10%. So here's the way we figure the effective interest rate. We start off with a carrying value in column E that's the 377,107. And this amount represents the difference between the face amount of the bond, 500,000, which we see in the journal entry here at the bottom, and the cash, which is the carrying value of the investment. That difference is the discount. And we call it unamortized because we're going to deal with amortization of that discount over time for 10 years. Year one, we get $30,000 in interest every year. But our interest expense, if you're the bond issuer and your interest income, if you're the bond buyer, is not $30,000. Instead, it's the carrying value column E, 377,107, times 10%. Why 10%? Because again, the bond was purchased to yield 10%. So the interest income or expense, I'll use either one, in this case it's income because you're in the investor, is 37,710. So we have a difference there between the interest we earn each year and the interest expense or income column, and that difference is the amount of bond amortization that we discount. That we, that's the amount of discount that we amortize. So finishing the example, the unamortized discount is now reduced 
from 122 down to 115 because of this amount. And our carrying value has also changed. Our carrying value is the $500,000 plus the new unamortized, less the new unamortized discount, the 115, to get 384. So you'll notice what's happening. Each year, the carrying value of the bond goes up so that when we get to the end of year 10, which is the maturity, we have a carrying value equal to the face amount of $500,000. I'm within a few dollars. Our unamortized discount goes down every year until it eventually goes down to zero. And the amount of discount that we amortize each year, that is the amount we take into income, we'll see in the journal entries in a minute, goes up every year until it's all used up. So by year 10, here at the bottom, you'll see a note that says, the unamortized balance goes to zero, and the carrying value goes to 500000 Moving down just a little bit, our stated interest rate again on the bond is 6%, so our annual interest is 6% of $500,000 or 30000 which is how I got the first column over here. Let's finish up by talking about the journal entries. When the investor buys the bond, we get an asset on the books of 500000 the face amount. We actually wrote a check for 377107 and our difference is the unamortized discount that we start amortizing here at the top of the page. On the balance sheet, we show the face amount of 500000 less the unamortized discount. And each year as we amortize, the first year being 7700 on the investor's books, we're going to reduce the discount account and we're going to credit an income account so that eventually we're going to go from a credit in this discount on bond investment account and we're going to debit 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 each year until this discount on bond investment goes to zero and on the investors books that entire discount is posted to income Here's our comment again on purchase to yield, we, assuming that we don't purchase the bond at par. And the reason that we don't purchase it at par is that the value of bond changes just like any other asset, and that yield equals yield to maturity. That's the end of part 21. If you'd like to find us on Facebook, look for St. Louis Test Prep, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on our website, stltest.net where we do live tutoring and live chat sessions. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you next time.